Hello, welcome to this third video in a series where I'm using JavaScript to do some 2D physics. So, if you follow the link in the description, it will take you to um, the following JavaScript sketchy pen on um, CodePen, which is a brilliant site for writing your own code live and it updates um, a canvas right then, uh, there for you, then and there for you, right? Um, so you want to find, or the link will take you straight to, where we left off in the in the last video. So this is where we had key input working, and the ability to create these um, these squares. I'm just going to make a couple of towers. One's fallen over already, and then we can use the once you've clicked the canvas. Remember, you can then use the arrow keys to move the, uh, the the ball around. Now we can. This is a lot of fun. I don't know why this is so much fun to move around and, and hit things. Um, by the way, now that we can create squares, you can hold a square with the mouse, or your, if you're on a touch screen, you can drag it around. But you won't be able to get hold of the, the circle because it will create a little square, and the mouse will, the mouse constraint will, will grab hold of that instead of the, uh, instead of our ball. So. It's the arrow keys for the ball. So in this uh, tutorial, we want to be able to um, work with collision events, meaning if we hit um, a box, we can we can do certain things. And we, we also want to know which object is, is hitting which other object to decide what to do. A different thing might happen depending if it's two boxes hitting each other or whether it's um, our little plip ball hitting hitting a square. Um, so I've already um, been quite successful in getting this working. So we want to get to something like this. So I've just switched pen, something I've already prepared. So now you notice when I hit the squares, they go red. They also get larger when I hit them. So from there, you can you can definitely make a massive range of different kinds of simulations and games. Once you've got events, um, on top of having the basic physics working and then we worked out the the key input you can make a massive host of games and you can host them right here on on code pen which is why i'm working from there right so we'll <laughs> allow that to evolve and grow we'll go back onto our previous sketch so we haven't got any collision events working. Collisions themselves are working, as you can see. And we've got the input working, but not the collision events. So the first thing we need to do in setup, and perhaps at the end here, is to, is to switch on the collision events. So we'll do that by writing redhen 2 physics dot, so that opens up to a, a load of functions that I've written in. I've not really written a library, it's just a, 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 a wrapper for Matter.js, written by Liam Brumit. That's the library that's doing all the physics. So we then write, um, type setup collisions. And that might break, yes, our code, because in that setup collisions, it refers to a callback function. So if that doesn't exist yet, it, it will break. So I've got to write a function now called my collision, um, and it will take an event. And now that we've got the body of the function, things should work. I thought it wasn't going to work for a second, and I really didn't know what to do next because um, I thought that was right, and it is right. Okay, so basically, once we've written setup collisions we're ready to go to to write the the code for our events but to have things work we, we must have this my collision function okay so basically when the physics engine detects um, two things hitting one another it will fire an event which will um, which will run this function my collision and what happens, all the information about who's hit who, will be contained within this event. So what we want to get hold of is the, the two objects that hit each other. So let's write a variable to store those, and we'll call it um, pairs equals um, event dot 
pairs. Okay, and by pairs I mean all the pairs of objects that hit one another, because it might be you know five or six and those spaceships that you've got hitting three or four dinosaurs. That sounds like a good game, by the way, which I might make. Um, so it's not just one pair of objects; it's lots and lots of objects hitting each other. Okay, so we've stored all of those, and now we want to iterate over all of those pairs and check whether we're interested in a particular collision. So we're only going to be interested in whether our ball has hit a square. So we need to kind of label these two objects, which we'll do in a moment. Right, so we need to iterate over all the pairs. So we're going to say four, um, and what I'm doing, let i equal zero, while i is less than all of those pairs. So we can, uh, we can refer to pairs dot length, which means just how long that array is of of objects um, that have hit each other, and then i is going to go up by one each time, and then complete your for loop. So um, we need to get two bodies out now. So we'll call those bod a and bod b. So we're going to say let bod a equal, and we're going to say pairs. Um, I um, body A. There we go. Okay. What does that mean? That means um, in that array of objects, those those pairs of objects that that have, that have collided, there's going to be an, uh, a body called body A and a body called body B. And I think body A is just the the first body that was created in our in our physics engine, and body B the second one. Um, so it's going to store those two bodies in our variable called bod a and bod b. So this pair's index i dot body a must be written in your code exactly like that. You can call bod a whatever you want. You could call it um, hitter a and hitter b. It doesn't really matter. But for simplicity, I'm going to call that bod a that's what I've always called it, and um, Bob B. Okay, so we've got one body, now we need the second one. That's going to be body B and bod B. Okay, um, so all it's doing so far is just grabbing hold of all the, the pairs of objects that have hit one another and it's not actually doing anything. So what we could do now is let's just see if we can change the colour of the objects that are hitting one another. I didn't try this before, so I don't know if this will work. So what we can say is um, bod a um, can I just refer to its fill? bod a um, I'm going to have to cheat. I'm going to have to go to my code. How do I grab hold of that body? I can do it in there. Um, bods. Oh, I see. Yep. That's what I need. Right, I won't copy and paste. Bod B dot ID minus two. Okay. Right. So this is because my wrapper is so untidy. Right. We have to refer to another array called bods. Now bods is all of the physics bodies that exist. And so we've got the, the, the edges which are hard, so that's four bodies there. We've got this static ledge. We've now got that cube which I've created under here. We've got this circle and that cube. So all of these are bods. So um, you can, it's an array, so you can refer to body A by this little trick. We can say bods, um, what is it, bod, <laughs> bod A ID minus 2. Now I can get hold of its fill colour, I believe, and I can say equals colour, um, let's just make it go, I was going to say black, but that would be quite dramatic. Let's just make it go white or something. Um, there we go. So make it go white. 
if it hits anything. Brilliant. So you see, when the ball hits um, the ground, it went white. And also you'll notice the ground, because it was created earlier than this square that dropped, it went white because bod A is what we're referring to. Okay, so now you can see we've a we've actually got our you know a collision event working already. Um, what we want to do is to check whether it's not just any body that's getting hit, but just our just our circle and the squares. So we don't want the ground involved this time. Okay, so we need an if statement. We want to say something like if body A's label equals, um, let's say, plip, um, then you can turn it white, but don't turn the, the ground white. Um, we'll make it go red, green, blue, I don't know, we'll make it go white again, okay. Um, oh, I know, we'll make the stroke colour change, then stroke equals um, red. Red's a good colour, and I think we should make the stroke weight a bit bigger, a bit thicker, so that we can see that that's happening. Okay. Um, okay, um, stroke weight. Sorry, I was just thinking I could do this a little bit tidier, but I'll just keep it simple at the moment. Okay, um, stroke weight just needs to be, I don't know, four, something like that. Right, so now we've broken it. So now um, nothing's changing color, stroke weight's not um, being affected. So what's going on? And of course it's because BOD's A label does not equal PLIP. We need to go and label um, our circle. So in setup, uh, where do we create our circle? Here he is. And we're saying clip equals the last object created. So if you remember from the previous uh, previous tutorial, you can store these, uh, store these objects in a variable that we create. So we've created clip up here as a variable and we're saying clip equals the last object that we ha happen to have created, which was the circle. So we're basically putting that circle inside this variable plip. So we can now say plip, um, we want to, do I call it make label or just label? I think I just write label. Is it label? Let me just cheat again. Well, we'll see if it works. And then you write what you want it to be called. And for simplicity, I'm just going to call it plip. There we go. Right. So it started working. So now, we can see that the square is hitting the ground, the ground's hitting plip and everything else, but it's only plip who's being affected. Okay. Um, and I wonder if I could, let's see if we can, we can make it go red like this when it hits the square, but nothing else. So every time we create a square, let's give it a label. So we're creating the squares when the mouse gets pressed. So in this function, mouse pressed. So um, I'm not calling the squares anything. So you have to grab hold of those objects with my last object created function. And then we say um, it's label is going to be, I should put this onto a new line, label and we'll call him box uh, boxy there we go boxy okay so he's got a label too which he's, he's probably very very pleased about I would be um, boxy so now in where's it gone in our collision event code we can now say if bod a is plip and bod b's label is boxy only then will its stroke be um will will the <laughs> lost words the stroke color and the stroke weight change um for plip so it's quite exciting there we go and it's actually working brilliant so as soon as we hit a box um that happened
Right. Um, it'd be great. To, we naturally want that to switch off when it hits the ground again. So then we can say outside of this conditional, we can say else. Can we? <laughs> there we go. Else. Fourteenth time lucky. Else. And I'm just going to switch this back to something like it was before. So I think I think he has yeah a black outline. But well, maybe that go white. It might look pretty cool. And then just reduce how thick it is by half. Okay. Have I just deleted something I'm not supposed to delete? Or did I just delete? No, nope. it's just a computer being slow. Okay, so now um, we've got a bug, <laughs> but um, things are basically working. When Plip hits the, um, the squares, then it goes red. When he hits the ground, it goes white again. Um, the bug was that the, the ground where, um, had its stroke change to white and that's because our logic is at fault it's saying um you know if in any way if this condition is false i.e it's the ground then make my um make my stroke weight go like this so a little hack could be ah we know plip um is being stored in an object called plip a variable called plip so instead of referring to this particular body, we could just say only make sure that plip is white and has got a, um, a thinner stroke weight. There we go. So this time if I drop the box, good, everything stays as it should do. And I'm building an excellent tower right at the top, yes. And every time I'm hitting a box, he's going red. OK, um, but then straight away getting turned back to white, of course, because there's no longer an event or something like that happening. OK. So you get the idea. So it's working kind of OK. Um, so in the other example, in my example, when I was I was also. When I'm hitting something, I'm kicking up um, the ball, the plip. And I'm also making those squares grow. OK, so let's look at how to do that. So this is a callback function, so we can't really um, we can't really use any of our own functions. They won't work in there. So we, we could we could switch a variable on and off. So we could say if we've hit a square, then jump equals true and then in our draw loop, we could say, if jump's true, make the ball jump, if it's false, and then switch jump off straight away. Does that make sense? Um, let's see if we can do that. So let's create a func, let's create that. Let, let's create it at the top to be nice and clean where all our other variables are. So let, uh, I suppose we should call it plip jump. Let plip jump equal false. There we go. Um, and then in our draw function, after we check the keys, we can say check jump. And then we'll write ourselves a function, uh, check jump. And we'll say if uh, plip jump. Um, I, can, I could just say equals true, but just leaving it like that resolves to true. So a little time saver there. So if plip jump is true, then I want to, I'll just put it pseudocode, um, make plip or give, or add force to plip upwards. Okay. Um, and we also then want to swi uh, switch plip jump um, off so we'll make it false again we only want it to jump that once or to be given that force once um, okay so let's get this this code in here so we want to say plip add force 
and we'll give it a force. So we're going to decide what that is. So let force equal create vector. Remember that force isn't going to be a number, it's got to be a vector because the vector will tell it which direction to go and the magnitude is like how much of a force, which is fun to play with. Um, so vector, we don't want any um, x direction, so that's going to be naught, but we do want to go minus 1. And we only need to have that as one. We're going to play with unit vectors at the moment. So we just want a pure direction. A unit vector, i.e. just using numbers of one, will give us that pure direction. But that's going to be far too much. So flip, um, sorry, force, which is a vector. So we can use P5s. Uh, vector function mult, which just means multiply, and then something like 0.04, I think, gives us a nice a nice jump. Okay, so that should happen when we hit a square, but we've not written the code to turn that kind of flip jump switch on. So what do we want to check? We want to check if body A or body B is plip and body A or body B is one of these squares, is a boxy. Okay, um, and that'll make plip jump. I'm running out of this space again. <laughs> right, I have it in a previous video I was making on Minecraft. Right, um, so, right, let's go and write that logic and then I must stop the video before my. Uh, Memory runs out. Oh no, that's gonna happen like every five seconds or something. I'm gonna I'll leave it up there next time. Um, right, where's our? I can't leave it up. I can't. Right. Um, collision collision function. I'm running out of memory up here as well. Okay. Right. I'll leave it up there. Um, so we want to say. Oh, actually, actually. We've already done the logic. We've got plip hitting a box, haven't we, from our previous things. So this over here, we can just say plip jump equals true. <laughs> oh, just one line of code. Will that work? Save that. So we've got a square over here, square over here. I want it. I, I'm building it up. I just want some towers. Oh my god, I'm not very good at towers. <laughs> okay, it's definitely worked. So when when we hit um, boxy, he he gets um, thrown into the air with that force. So I've definitely made this jump force too big. So let's reduce that by a factor of ten and build my tower. Brilliant! Now you can see he's just receiving a little kick, and it gives the effect like uh, as though he's bouncing on a trampoline or something. Okay, I think I'm going to leave the video there. I didn't do the final thing, which, if I look at my pre my other video, is, is to make these squares actually grow. Um, so I'll just show you the code for that. I won't go through it. But there we go. As you, as you see, every time we're, we're hitting the square, we're making the square um, get larger. So I'll just quickly show you how I did that. Um, check keys, I'm looking for my collisions, right. Um, so there's jump equals true, so it's similar to plip jump, that's what that is. And what I'm saying is um, S, S equals um, basically the, the body um, which resolves to the box. So bod B, I'm asking here, if that is the box, record what body that is in um, in S. Does that make sense? So I've made a variable S and I'm storing that box. So every time a box gets hit by plip and plip only, S will be that, um, will be that box. So what I'm saying in my jump um, function, so this is very similar to what I've just written, um, and then all you need to say is s make scale and then whatever scale you want so if you want it twice as big so an exponential growth 
Um, whoa. There we go. It will it will do so. I've put a cap on here. I've said if it's S's diameter, as long as it's less than the width, a third of the width, then you can make it get bigger so it doesn't fill the screen. Right, there we go. I hope that was helpful. I hope I've got some memory left. Um, next time, I think I'll make maybe a Dinosaur vs. Aliens game or Attack on Titan or something on here. Um, but thank you very much. Do ask me any questions and... Um, I'll try to help you out. So I'll put the link to um, this code and the key input code as well. I've just realized I've actually changed all this code and that needs to be there for a previous video. So I've got to delete all of this. So I'll, I'll give you a link to this one, so the finished stuff, but also um, I'll take off all the the junk. What I should have done, not junk, the code that we just did, what I should have done at the beginning of the video is forked this because that just clones, copies all of this code in another file which I could have saved. Anyway, there we go. I hope that's um, useful. Goodbye. See you next time.